Hey, this is Travis. Today we're going to compare ICP with BitTensor. Obviously, I love BitTensor, but I'm a truth seeker first, so I'm going to try to be as objective as possible here. And I'll give you my opinion at the end. The very first thing that both of these networks have in common is they're both very complicated. I don't know anybody who understands both of them. I certainly wouldn't pretend to be an expert on either of them. But I'll tell you the key differences that I've found. First, let's go into the elements of each network. So mining on Bitcoin is used to secure the network by making it more costly to attack the network. For BitTensor and ICP, this is not how mining works at all. On ICP, there are node providers. They do the computations and host dApps or canisters on ICP. These node providers are selected based on physical location, and they also don't want them to be run in a large like FANG type company hardware like AWS. On ICP, they really want to make sure that the hardware is decentralized. So these nodes are kind of like validators on Ethereum. Now on BitTensor, miners are the ones who actually do the work in each subnet and validators are the ones that grant access and check the work on each subnet. Now I explain how BitTensor works in other videos. If you're getting lost, feel free to check out the playlist in the description. It'll help you get up to speed within a few minutes. All right, now there's subnets in both ICP and BitTensor. They are similar in conception in that a subnet produces a service of some sort. In ICP, subnets are created by a voting process in the DAO. Passing this voting process will require considering decentralization guidelines as set out by the DAO in order to pass this voting process. So you've got to have decentralized nodes uh, as far as the physical location and also not in some large centralized server farm like AWS. Now on BitTensor, subnets are completely permissionless. So anyone can create a subnet today immediately after finding out about BitTensor and not even have to talk to anyone. So let's compare the decentralization of both BitTensor and ICP. So we really need to define decentralization here because BitTensor and ICP are both decentralized in different ways. Decentralization refers to the distribution of authority, control, and resources across a network of participants, rather than concentrating them in the power of a single entity, such as a company or government. So I'm going to split this into three kinds of decentralization. So the first is infrastructure decentralization. So in ICP, reliance on established cloud services like AWS is considered centralization. You'll see that ICP tends to do better here on infrastructure decentralization than BitTensor. The physical location of the nodes in the network matters a lot as well in ICP. In ICP, they want nodes to be spread out. Now in BitTensor, centralization of infrastructure is not a requirement for all subnets, but subnets can put incentives in place to make this happen. You can go and look at the old subvortex subnet seven for an example of how this works. The second category is economic decentralization. So in ICP, the DAO controls onboarding standards for new nodes. So you can't just register a new node or a subnet on ICP. You have to pass the DAO's requirements to be approved. And then also the creators of the network, the Definity Foundation, they received a significant portion of the initial supply, giving the Definity Foundation more power. Now in BitTensor, the permissionless nature of the network helps a lot in economic decentralization. So as I always say, anyone, anywhere, can create a miner, a validator, a subnet, and if what they're working on is valuable, they can get paid for their work. Also, BitTensor was permissionlessly mining from the very start, giving the OpenTensor Foundation a lot less power than the Definity Foundation. Also, with BitTensor, there was no pre-mine, no ICO, no VC allocation, no treasury, no team allocation, etc. It was completely fair launched like Bitcoin. So BitTensor has always been economically decentralized. And then the third category of decentralization is protocol development decentralization. So the Definity Foundation does protocol upgrades. Um, it's centralized. And also the OpenTensor Foundation does protocol upgrades, again, centralized. Now, upgrades to the ICP's subnets sometimes need to go through the DAO, whereas upgrades to BitTensor subnets never need to go through a DAO. The subnet owner can do whatever they want with the subnet. So I'd say that ICP really cares a lot about decentralization of infrastructure. 
specifically centralization in the hands of large companies, whereas BitTensor is economically decentralized and it's up to subnet owners to determine how decentralized they want their subnet's infrastructure to be. So I'm going to go over the uses of both tokens. So ICP is used to allow holders to vote in the DAO for the direction of the network. It's also used to pay for compute on the network. And in BitTensor, Tau is required to purchase access to the network output. And both ICP and Tau can be staked. I should also mention that the one big thing that ICP folks really like to point out is that their AI is on chain. This is a really contentious issue for ICP advocates. They feel that AI should be completely on chain so that it is transparent. Now, I don't know enough about how their AI works. I'm not even sure it does. I tried to interact with something and I couldn't find anything. Now, if you know of a website that you could link to where I can interact with an AI built on ICP, that would be great. If you leave it in the comments, I will pin it. But to do this at a minimum, we would need at least data collection, storage, training, fine tuning, and inference all done on chain. Now, I'd love to know how this all works. There's a link to how this all works on BitTensor in the description. Essentially, subnets are strung together, each one specializing in one stage of AI development. We see a new subnet register on BitTensor every few days, and the permissionless nature of BitTensor means that the subnets are very diverse. From weather prediction, to storage, to AI inference, to AWS competitors, to influencer advertising, we never know what's next. Now, the permissionless market nature of BitTensor means that only the most valuable work is rewarded. So we may not know what is coming next, but we know that it will be proportionately rewarded based on its value to the network. So you can kind of see that the uses for BitTensor subnets are basically limitless at this point. Basically, any digital commodity can be run on BitTensor. Now, as far as how ICP is used, I tried their chat app, Open Chat. They also have some other decentralized apps like social media, and I think there's games as well. Now, I think that the biggest difference between BitTensor and ICP is that BitTensor is permissionless. I feel that the pace of innovation on BitTensor is much quicker thanks to the permissionless market nature of the network. Now, personally, I have a very strong interest in how free markets optimally organize human action. And we get to see this on BitTensor. Now, I wish the ICP folks and Definity Foundation well. I think their goal of decentralizing infrastructure is a noble one, and they seem to be doing it. Now, there's a lot I missed here. Let me know the strongest points in the comments.